President Obama makes his world stage debut and attempts to downplay any divisions with the other countries gathered at the G20 financial summit. The president says he's confident that world leaders are going to act in concert. This is hard, hardly the London Symphony. <laughs> Top line starts right now. Welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian, joined here with Rick Klein. We'll be here every weekday at noon Eastern to bring you the latest political headlines and analysis, the stuff driving the day right before you head out the door to lunch. And we want you to be part of the conversation as well. Join us via Twitter at The Note. That's one word, The Note. Let us know how we're doing. If you have any questions for our guests, we'll try to work it into the conversation. <laughs> with that, let's begin with your political Top Line of the Day. European vacation. President Obama has arrived in London for the start of the G20 meetings. He gets an early concession from Russia, David, but it's going to be hard going from here on out as he looks to, to achieve some of the major priorities. They're doing the easy stuff first. Republican budget rollout, take two. You remember last week's disastrous rollout among House Republicans for their Obama alternative budget. Uh, I don't know that uh, today they finally put some meat on the bones, but we have not yet gotten the reaction from everyone inside the party. And there's still divisions within the Republican Party about just how specific they should be in offering this alternative. Recount mania. The New York 20 election came and went, and we don't have a winner yet. We also don't have a winner in the Minnesota Senate race, though that may be getting closer. But the, the upshot of the New York race is that people like us won't be able to draw any big conclusions out of a special election. I was so deflated with these results. We had built up this election. <laughs> it was going to tell us something. And, uh, of course, we have no results to go with. So I don't know that its meaning will ever get sort of uh, assessed properly. And, of course, Palin sidelined. Republican Party leaders have basically fired Sarah Palin as their headlining guest at a fundraiser dinner in June. She said she would be there initially, then, oh, I can't agree to that. Newt Gingrich has now been hired to take her slot. Well, there you go. This Anchorage versus Washington brain trust has got to be worked out if Sarah Palin's going to be a contender in 2012 or beyond. And it's not the biggest news out of Alaska today. We'll talk about that Ted Stevens decision with Attorney General Eric Holder basically throwing out his conviction. But first, let's talk about the G20 summit in London with our guest, Congressman Darrell Issa, Republican of California. Congressman, thanks for being here today. Well, thanks for having me on on this important issue. Uh, I want to play you a little bit of a sound today. The president had a uh, joint press conference with uh, Prime Minister Gordon Brown of England, and uh, he, he was basically asked if America is responsible in part, in large part, for this global financial crisis. Take a listen to what he said, and we'll talk about it on the other side. I, I would say that uh, if you look at the, the sources of this crisis. Uh, the United States certainly uh, has some accounting to do with respect to a uh, regulatory system that was inadequate to the massive changes that had taken place in the global financial system. Congressman, it seems like the president is indeed uh, taking some of the blame on, on the part of our country. I is that fair? Is, is this uh, in part our fault? Well, I think he's certainly casting blame on the previous administration by talking about regulation rather than taking what is probably a more legitimate credit, which is, uh, or blame, which is that we, we created these products, we exported these products, these were major uh, things that were touted by our financial service community on a global basis, and we helped in no small way run up these same sort of uh, instrument debts uh, in other countries. And I would, would have wished he would have said that because it wasn't a secret or an absence of regulation. It was something America was, for better or worse, proud of until we realized the downside of it. Do you think taking some blame out of the box was important for the message that he sends to the leaders of the G20, or do you think it sends the wrong message? Well, I think it sends the right message to say that America realizes that these instruments and the concept of these instruments to no small degree originated in the United States and were bought off uh, by other countries to be used there, like in Ireland, and also a lot of countries were left holding American paper. So I think he has to get beyond that when he talks about us getting out of a uh, a worsening global recession that is no longer just credit based. And, and his popularity going overseas, trying to improve America's reputation uh, around the world, do you think he's going to be able to parlay that? It seems like he may have some trouble with getting more money pumped into the global system from our partners, our global partners. 
Well, I think if, if uh, President Obama were to act more like a Ronald Reagan, uh, a champion of greatness of our country and of free enterprise and of what we can do, I think he would get more support and be very popular. Right now, he's tending to say the previous administration was bad and I'm less bad, and that's not necessarily what the Germans, the French, or the British really want to hear. Congressman Issa, I want to ask you about the Republican budget proposal. Finally, today, we see some numbers, an actual budget proposal from House Republicans. Uh, the, the Office of Management and Budget did a quick read on it, and they found that uh, this is an additional $4 trillion in tax cuts. I want to ask you, why is that the right course when the Bush tax cuts uh, seem not to have prevented the economic downturn that we're in right now? Well, first of all, uh, I don't think this, uh, this budget proposal that my own party is putting out is ambitious enough on the cutting back in spending and the reducing of the deficit. So I would like to both both on the tax side and on the uh, spending side, see a more ambitious uh, package. But when you look at this package compared uh, to uh, the Democratic uh, proposal, the Democratic proposal spends more, taxes more, and pushes more onto future debt. And that's really the challenge, is doubling the, uh, the national debt in the next five years. In other words, spending more in deficit than all other presidents, including George W. Bush combined. That's the problem with the Democratic proposal. Ours is certainly closer to the right direction. Hopefully we could uh, have an opportunity to, to move ours plus. I, I, Congressman, I just want to narrowly focus on one aspect. You said uh, on the tax side, you are concerned with some of this as well as the spending side. On the tax side, are you not for, as your colleagues are, making those 2001 and 2003 Bush tax cuts permanent? Well, I think I think we have to do all or, or most of that. I, I really do believe making them permanent makes a lot of sense because it brings certainty to the market. And if you can't make them all permanent, you certainly need to make most of them permanent. And I think that's where President Obama's on the wrong track. America prospered because of those tax cuts. We did other things wrong, but the economy was booming for a good reason because lower taxes meant people were able to invest more money in their businesses and in spending. But the part they invested in their businesses is the part we need to continue to have have happen going forward. So I think it's the reason that the Republican pro proposal brings certainty to that process uh, that people can count on capital gains and other favorable treatment going forward so they can make logical investments. Congressman Darrell Issa, Republican of California, thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. So, David, just a taste right there of some of the divisions still within the party. Congressman Issa, just, a, just about an hour or two ago, Republican leaders put, put forward their budget. He's saying, well, not necessarily my budget. Yes, although it sounds like he's on board with the philosophical principles behind their budget of what they're putting out there. He's certainly, uh, as he said, a whole lot closer uh, to his own party. No question about that. And we're also seeing a split right now in the Senate. Senate leadership not bringing forward their own budget proposal, but Senator John McCain says he wants to do it, and he may do just that, despite Mitch McConnell saying we're, we don't have any interest in playing that game. And, of course, John McCain has the ability to get a lot of attention on that kind of alternative budget. That's exactly right, and, and it becomes a rallying point for, I think, some of the divisions within the party about how specific to be. But aren't they taking the Democratic Party bait when, isn't John McCain and, and the Republican House leaders, don't they take the Democratic Party bait when they're, by putting up an alternative budget? They're not in the majority. It's not their job to propose a budget. Why are they taking the bait? They're taking the bait because I think they're stung by this whole party of no thing that Barack Obama has put out there as a label for everything that Republicans do. They need to take away that talking point. To